Some years ago, the psychologist Timothy Wilson wrote a book with its evocative title, Strangers to Ourselves. We have been introduced to that stranger in us, which may be in control of uh, much of what we do, although we rarely have a glimpse of it. But now, we have time to look inside and be familiar with that stranger in us. Hello, my friend. It's a delight for me to be with you, especially in this tough situation with sad, sadness, sorrow, pain, and I'm sure there is happiness in it. Recovered people, healing people, how much people helping each other. That is awesome and promising. I'm sure we will pass through this, and uh, but it's time to look inside and think, especially in, in our work and about this talk, think about who I am, what I am really passionate about. Just doing dentistry, just placing implants better, or maybe a bigger picture. Think about caring patients, caring our patients. We will pass through this, but we should guide this to be more mature and wiser. We will change. All things after this will change. And we will change. But we should guide this. Speaking of knowledge and wisdom, I will walk you through a little bit the story of uh, smile, implant dentistry, and biology and how understanding biology better can help us uh, place implant better and safer. There are some controversies on that, uh, on those topics. Uh, I'm trying to break them down and uh, make a concept about these uh, controversies. And biology is not boring as much as you think it is. Okay, let me ask uh, this question that I always ask it in my presentation. Why these cat walkers do not smile? Look at them. In the way that one learns how to use scissors, not everything is mechanical and robotized. The hands are always interviews, but a workman's tools are changing with time. No one smile. Why? Because if you look at their smile, or her smile, you cannot look at any other objects uh, that th that fashion is about. For example, accessories, shoes, clothes, hair, nothing. You just look at her smile. Because a smile is the key to aesthetic and it's very important. And this is our job, to maintain it, to design it, to construct it, or reconstruct it. This is very important. If only a little one, like this, or a Duchenne smile, like this. Our work is so important. Okay, as you know, implant dentistry is a very predictable treatment from 1980s, from that situation to this harmony of uh, aesthetic and function. As you know, trends demonstrate the strong needs for dental implant therapy and uh, demands getting more and more. By age 50, the average American is missing more than 12 teeth. With very high success rate, more than 97% as you know it, and so many benefits Preservation of alveolar bone, preservation of adjacent, uh, adjacent to the structure, this is very important. And uh, so many benefits. I know you have heard it and you know it very much. Look at this. This situation could be prevented from the first place with precise knowledge, diagnosis, and treatment plan. It's very important to consider that when you decide to retain a tooth with questionable or hopeless prognosis, uh, allowing 
progressive bone loss to continue can uh, compromise your treatment plan option, your future treatment plan option. And rearing removal partial denture can cause this situation with severe bone loss. Look at the level of the bone. Could be prevented from the first place. Preservation of tooth structure with placing implants. What complications occur that lengthens and compromise all of the process, jeopardize all of our efforts, and bring dissatisfaction, pain, and uh, uh, failure and complication for our patients? And nobody likes it. Nobody like this situations, complications or failure. So, for knowing this phenomenon better, we should uh, understand its major predictors. Patient-related factors, implant characteristics, and clinician's experience and knowledge. Thomas Lenkiewicz is about in this uh, in his uh, recent book about. Uh, zero bone loss concept talking about these factors but in a different way but well, they are the same operator dependent factors misdiagnosis factor and zero bone loss factors I'm talking about more about the uh, dead patient related implant related and clinicians experience and knowledge patient related factors we should consider the biology thin biotype thick biotype habits, bone quantity, bone quality, and genetic polymorphism. It's very important. And also patient demands. People have suggested that I fix them, but I like my gaps. As my father used to say, son, your teeth are air-cooled. Gaps are openness, possibility, room to savor. The greater the gaps, the greater the contact, the greater the feeling. Okay, patient related factors. But the art and uh, knowledge of the clinicians is very important to look deep into patient related factors, implant related factors, and harvest what he or she needs for that particular situation, case, and patient. This is very important. These factors work together, and, uh, merge together, and overshadowing on each other in some point, in somewhere, but it's the art of clinicians to use these to do the best things for the patient. Okay, so how much we know about this? How much we know about this? We know the knowledge is the most important one. For, from the first place, osseointegration. integration. How much we know it? We have osseointegration integration here, but it's not enough. It's not enough. We need something else. We need something more. Osseointegration integration is a direct contact? No, it's not. We know that. Why titanium? Because of that immediately a thin oxide layer, titanium is a very good option. That we don't have it with iron. And we have it with uh, peak and uh, ceramic also. Titanium is a very good option based on the literature and so many articles. But why what kind of data you? Based on the beautiful uh, lecture of uh, Dennis Tarno, what kind of data you? Bone needs texture. Bone cannot attach to high polished neck, high polished data you. We can use it. This is the biology and how understanding biology helps us. And, and, plat and epithelium can attach to. Uh, clean and uh, non-toxic uh, surface. 
bone needs texture, we can use it for placing implant in better position. So, the better definition, osseointegration is a process, clinically asymptomatic rigid fixation in bone during function because patient needs function and aesthetic. Another step in biology, biological width. In every, every bone in the body needs a layer of biological width. One millimeter connective tissue, one millimeter epithelia, junctional epithelium. This two millimeter is necessary for every bone in body, such as your tooth or implants. We need it. If we don't have enough room for that biological width, we have bone loss to make room for that. So we can use it again for placing implant in better position and biologically, biologically uh, uh, dictated implant placement. Look at this beautiful slide from Dennis Turner's lecture. When we're placing implant and at the same time placing the uh, healing abutment, epithelial can attach to the abutment and in this situation we have enough room for biological width so there is no bone loss in textures uh, titanium. After removing the uh, healing abutment we rupture the epithelium and epithelium can then attach under the junction of implant and uh, abutment. So for making room we have bone loss as we can see here. Epithelium can only attach under the junction of abutment and implant. So we don't have room enough and we, then we have bone loss. Because of that some uh, say that after one year, during the one year, the first year we have bone loss. But can be protect, can be prevented if we know it, if we know the situation, if we know the biology. This is the bone loss here. This is the junction. So we need a room under the junction for biological weight. So we have bone loss. That can be prevented. See, we have bone loss under the junction for making room, for making room, and also bone cannot attach to high polished color. But here, after placement of implant and abutment, maybe one time abutment, we have enough room for biological width, so no bone loss. So we can use biology to placing implant better and safer. Look at this again. If we place that junction at the bone level, we have bone loss because of that biological width. We need the room. But we can prevent it, as I mentioned before, by placing that junction vertically on high polished on, on uh, tissue level implants or in another way. Anyway, we need a room for biological weight. Look at it three dimensionally, horizontally and vertically. That was a vertically position. We can use a horizontally position placing a smaller diameter abutment on a larger diameter implant seating surface that is platform switching. How? We make a room between junction of abutment and implant and the bone crest. The deeper, the deeper platform switching, the more stable bone. The deeper, the more stable bone. So we have enough room for biological width. So there is no need to have a bone loss. Another thing about biology, patient-related factor, knowing that, and implant-related factor, and implant design, that is platform switching. See, after 10 years, no bone loss, because we have enough room for biological width. 
look at it three dimensionally. We have enough room horizontally. So we should aware of radius of action of biological weight 1.5 or 2 millimeter. Now we know if we place implant buccally we have bone loss because we need room or if we place it more closer to the edges than it we have bone loss. But considering the radius of action of biological weight and platform switching we have more room we have more room you can see this we have more room co compared to non-platform switching implants more room so platform switching indications obviously for short implants because we don't want to lose any bone after placing crown minimize bone loss and allow implant implant dimension less than three millimeter between them because we have more room and allow implant two dimension to less than 1.5 millimeter we can place it implant closer to adjacent also with knowing biology we know how to place implant in immediate impl immediate placement behind this line and we need that gap junction why we cannot place implant too buccally because we lose bone. We should place it bodily, palatally. We should place it palatally and off axis, not the previous axis of the tooth. We need to place it off axis for uh, biologically and prosthetically driven placement. So why we need this gap junction in buccal? I'm talking about this because of the Buccal bone vascularization. After, imp after tooth imp uh, extraction, we don't have bone marrow for vascularization, we don't have PDL, we just have periosteum. And there is a very thin bone, as we can see here. So, we use biology again. We need that gap because after extraction, with this thin buccal bone, we have bone loss anyway, vertically and horizontally. So. We need to replace that gap junction and fill it with a uh, uh, bimaterial to compensate that uh, bone loss. Also, you can see here, after extraction, we lose thickness, 50% in weight, 2-4 mm in height, and don't raise the flap. Biology say, if you raise the flap, you rupture that vascular supply from periosteum. So we need it. So don't raise the flap. And also consider the thin biotype. It is a thin biotype or thick biotype. We need thickness for tissue. If we don't have it enough, we should place a graft before placing implant or anything. We need thickness of uh, soft tissue. Also, with understanding biology, we can deceive the body. But placing root part of the tooth in the body and uh, removing the crown part, the coronation, uh, we can deceive the body. Body thinks there is root there. And we have emergence here. Very nice. The root submergence technique that uh, Salama uh, wrote an article about that. Running room. With knowing biology, biology we can make a very nice uh, running room and emergence profile for our implants. Placing a brain in the right place, jumping distance, putting jeep, uh, biomaterial, and this is very important don't bring the edge of the socket together. We need secondary healing, stabilized clot turns into bone. If you bring 
together the edge of the flap, buccally and palatally or buccally lingually together after placing implant in immediate placement, you bring the epithelium to the plate that we don't want it, such as GBR technique. We don't want epithelium to be part of the plate. So just a stabilized clot is enough, like a socket after extraction. After one week, epithelium can cover above the clot. That is, that is good, but not before that. So leave it and don't bring the edge of the flap together. We just need a stabilized clot. But for stabilizing, stabilizing the clot, we use we can use a customized abutment or a provisional crown to stabilize the cloud and the biomaterial. Just it. Look at this. So we should we should evaluate buccal plate, primary stability, implant design, gap management, and biotype. This is the biology. Okay, biotype of perio and tooth shape. It's very important to consider it. If we have, we don't have enough uh, tissue, we should place soft tissue graft because we need tissue thickness. We need three millimeter from gingival margin to neck of the implants for that running room. For that running room, we need that. So, biotype is very important. Again, we can deceive body in the socket shield technique or partial extraction therapy to place part of the root in the body and body thinks there is root there and we have very nice uh, running room as you can see and very nice emergent profile okay also we should consider the bone height in interdental space to the contact area based on the Tarno classification. We need to measure measure this. Uh, we need five millimeter to make a very good puppy and if we, if we don't have it we, uh, we should consider it and uh, uh, do something about this. And from another point of view implant failure. Also we should know the biology. We should know that implant failure acts as a domino effect that may cause more failure in one person. Failure not randomly distributed among people. It clusters within subjects, within people, not necessarily in same area or quadrant, but in same person, same uh, patient. So there is high risk for implant failure and failure clusters within subjects. We should know this. Okay, with knowing all of this, 80% of implants are restored by only 20% of dentists. Why? Because that lack of knowledge and experience, that is very important clinician's knowledge and experience and uh, you should ask yourself will you be part of the future growth do you want to be uh, among that 20 percent or make it more methods and how are the secondary this is very important the full mind the warm heart the dominant will are primary and paramount you should build a uh, solid practice for you, for yourself, to move forward, to raise, to increase your knowledge and experience. It needs a solid practice. 
your vision, you should work on your vision, your character, your team, and your brand. And aim for perfection. Because seeking less than perfection has consequences. And forget doing my best concept. Doing my best concept is not enough, especially in our works, in our... In our in, uh, uh, medical situations in medical era in dentistry era aim for perfection because less than perfection has consequences thank you so much and uh, stay safe stay home and take care bye